and welcome to The Next Big Star. I'm your host, James Kelly, and my guest today is Raf Adami. Is that correct, Raf? Yes. Raf? All right. How are you doing? So, Raf, we know each other a little bit through a mutual film, but we'll get into that in a few minutes. Uh, let's tell the audience a little bit about who you are. Uh, where'd you grow up? How many brothers and sisters? Something about your family. Well, I was born and raised in El Paso, Texas, okay. um, which is uh, a little small town on the west part of the tip of Texas. Um, was I was there for 18 years of my life. Um, believe it or not, I was born in 1959. Oh, okay. Um, so, I mean, it's really hard to believe, but <laughs> I was born in 59. Um, I have you beat by a few years, though. So Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I, uh, you know, I, I grew up in El Paso and uh, was born and raised with uh, my mom and dad. They, my dad was a grocery store manager, and my mom was pretty much, you know, a, a waitress that, you know, trying to make a living and help us survive. Um, they, they wasted no time. They had four kids. Okay. Um, and I'm the th the second oldest of four, um, and uh, so basically, me and my brother decided that uh we were going to go to uh well we didn't decide he actually decided for me <laughs> let's put it that way um i wasn't that big of a that i wasn't that popular of a guy when i was in, in high school so i i wanted to be an, an artist when i when i got out and so i started to get involved in creative art design which is what i really wanted to do i wanted to get involved in graphic design and somehow my brother uh talked me into going to electronic school with him oh wow so uh you know the condition was that you know that he would do whatever it took to get help me to graduate so <laughs> um because i was you know i mean i was just a c average student my brother was an a student and uh so i said okay we'll do that and so we went to devry and uh, graduated from um uh, phoenix arizona uh back in the uh back in the 80s early 80s and uh actually um turned out pretty good i um i didn't realize i i mean i wasn't that great in electronics but i was able to understand what was going on um i did struggle a little bit but i ended up graduating with honors okay. and um both me and my brother we got hired um by this company um because they basically devry was one of the programs that they had where you can graduate and then they'll place you oh you know wow. and so their placement was like i remember at the time was like 98 percent. it was just wow. ungodly numbers so i'm like thinking wow this is going to turn out to be pretty good <laughs> so we we interviewed for a few companies and we ended up interviewing for this company in in california and lo and behold we both got hired same on company. board same company uh same package same everything wow um they they uh drove you know we they pretty much paid our way to go out there to move us and everything and so uh we moved out there woodland hills one of the best uh, areas yeah, of town at nice. the time and in in that you know in south central in southern la excuse me um and well you know we tried that out and uh it worked out really cool we we were at these really cool apartments um started work and everything and started to realize that I was struggling a little bit more than my brother was once we got on board. Um, when you're working for the government, you know, you've got these procedures and functions and, and just a whole bunch of paperwork and you have, to, it's got to be done the government way. And, um, well, my brother was really, really good at it and he caught on really, really quick. I, on the other hand, was not able to grasp it, uh, as good as he did. So I, after three months of working for the company, I was I was going to be laid off. Well, I mean, with the government, they with, even sometimes have their own systems. Like I worked for the government, and we had our own system called DSIS. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I'm a little familiar. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I was kind of like in a predicament. I didn't know what the hell to do. Um, so m my cousin at the time, who was really like our um, – he was there to kind of help us out, even though he was – just not a really good example for anything. Okay. <laughs> he ended up well i just don't want to go into that but um he kind of guided us and, and gave us direction and so one of the things he told me was dude you got to go back to the to the company and tell him look 
you, you got to place me somewhere where I can be useful or, or send me back to Texas. And so, you know, the next Monday, this happened on Friday. I got laid off on Monday. I went back to work and I, I remember being in that conference room and crying my eyes out mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and letting the guy know, the director know, look, I'm sorry that, that things didn't work out. And can you place me somewhere else? And I don't want to go back home. I don't have the money. I don't, this is basically all I have is what you guys got us here with. And so lo and behold, they placed me in one of the coolest jobs I've ever had. Oh, wow. Uh, I was, I was with them for about 10 years. I uh, worked for the government. Um, I, I wore a bunny suit every day at work <laughs> and I got to work with inertial navigation systems, laser guidance and control systems, basically. Wow. Um, putting up experiments and, and figuring out what's, what works and what doesn't. So that's what my role was, uh, pretty much putting, setting up the experiments for all those scientists. Wow. In, that's an in, interesting in, job. In the, in the clean room lab that I worked in and everything was like, you, you had to have, uh, you, you were basically sucked in before you actually walked in because you, you could not have any particles on you because of the optics that we worked okay. on and the fiber optics and the lasers and the helium, you know, everything had to be like really clean. So sanitized and sanitized. Yeah. So there was only a number of particles per million per room that was allowed. So, um, I did that for 10 years, loved it. Um, during that time, I was able to get my degree in computer science okay. before I left the company. And then I was able to get into acting before I left the company. So when I was in LA during that 10 year period, um, I was an extra for three movies that I was out there for. Okay. And, uh, that was really the first time that I ever dabbed, dabbled in acting was, was being an extra. Um, and then I didn't do anything for, for years and years until I got here to Las Vegas. How long have you been in Vegas? Uh, I've been here for 21 years. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. After, after I left, uh, LA, I went back to Texas and, and stuck with what I was still doing with my new degree, uh, computer science, which I never used really. I never really liked computer science, but <laughs> I, I got writing out of it. Um, and I got courseware developer out of it. So I started creating courseware develop, you know, uh, back then it was course, it was a uh, computer-based training Okay. and I really enjoyed it, but you had to have a programming mind as well. And so, um, did you ever pick up your artwork again? Cause you said you, you, you liked doing graphic art. I did, but not in that manner. Okay. Not in that manner. I, uh, I, you know, I did a little bit of calligraphy work, and um, I've done um, some, some, some drawing type work, but I've never, I never went back to doing the graphic design. Wow, that's a really interesting question that you asked that. Why didn't I go back Why, to doing that? If that I was your passion, I yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, and um, who knows. But uh, still might it, it, exactly, you know, but right now, I mean, I've as I was uh, going through the motions of all the different jobs I I held, I, I went from California to Texas and then started going into the um, what 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 do you call them? Um, it starts with a C word that was very popular back then um, for it. You, you would do a job and you would go from one job to the next. Uh, Consulting work. Yeah, yeah, consulting. Consulting okay, work. So right, I did consulting yeah. work and went everywhere from Tampa, Florida to Chicago to uh, Iowa to Dallas. To, now, was this on your own or is for no, a company? It, it was through the, the consulting firms okay. that I would go through. Okay. They would place you, right. you know. Yeah. Uh, one of the coolest jobs I ever had was I had a multimedia job in with IBM in Atlanta, and I was hired to go on board with them when I was living in Tampa. Okay. But they told me, look, um, cause my assignment had finished in Tampa and basically they said, we need you in Atlanta, but your job doesn't start for like almost another year from now. So we're going to pay you, you know, to, to, to just hang it tight. Wow. And so I was, it was, it wasn't the year it was uh, six months. It was six months. So they paid me for six months doing nothing. And then I, I got the gig moved to Atlanta and then I ended up working for them for like maybe a month or so. It didn't work out that great. Okay. But it and the was. And the new tower they built. They built a new tower down there in, in Atlanta. Did they? Yeah, it was really nice. Back then or? Back, well, this was in the 80s. Mm -hmm. 
So, yeah, it was the tallest building downtown, I believe, at that time. Right. No, this wasn't downtown. This was working at the near the uh, Peachtree area. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, I did a lot of consulting work, and then I had a, a position in Chicago that I really, really enjoyed. Um, got a chance to live there for a couple of years. Um, and then once I left Chicago, um, I came back to... Uh, I lived with my family in California for a little bit as well, but I came back to Las Vegas, and I remember uh, putting up my stuff in storage as I left Chicago um, because I had just lost my job, and so things were not going that great for me, and I thought, well, I'll put my stuff in storage, and I'll move west to go visit my family, you know, stay with my mom and my sister. So I did that. And um, when I first started out, things were really rough. <laughs> I couldn't find any work. So I was doing like all sorts of just really strange jobs. And then um, I was working at In-N-Out Burger, believe it or not. Okay. And, and this is somebody that had a degree. and Happens was, all the time. Was used to making, you know, at the time I think I was making, well, I was making pretty good money. Um, but... Uh, there I was at uh, In and Out Burger, um, and then um, one day I was just out doing my thing and just you know sending out resumes and all that, and sent out uh, my information to a company that was that was hiring for writers, and so I'm like, wow, this is interesting. So I did. I sent my resume in, and lo and behold, I've been with that company ever since. And oh, that's great. Yeah, I've been a writer for them for 20 plus, it'll be 20 years next year. I'm a senior writer. So you're a technical writer, is that what you would say? <clears throat> yeah, I'm a senior uh, technical author, mm -hmm. and I, I write documentation. Okay. Um, I really love my job. Which is the first step in writing a first novel. I <laughs> <laughs> no, I've actually, I've interviewed people who... You know, another show I have where they, you know, started off either as a nurse and didn't realize that all the things they have to write, they're, they're actually it's setting them up to become a novelist, which she did. And then, you know, other people I've interviewed, the same thing. Well, it's interesting that you say that because I really do would want to do it. And I'm just scared as hell no. to start. And I just don't know where to start. And I started getting into the Oculus VR thing. And I need to get back into it because I do love it. Uh, but they were offering classes on how to how to uh how to write um you know a a, a script a, a scene uh uh what do you call it a story uh, yeah how to write a script okay and yeah. so they teach you all the steps that you need to do to to start writing and so i i, I went into the class a couple of times and and then i stopped going because then because there was a lot of interruption in my life <laughs> mm -hmm. We might not go into all that, but <laughs> but uh, so you have you've dabbled in writing scripts then, or at least no, I have not, but I want to. Okay. That's that's going to be that's a that's a little back burner thing that I want okay. to dabble in. Yeah, I think sometime. we can overthink things sometimes and talk ourselves out of stuff. When in reality, you know, I think if you just jump in and do it, you can do it. Oh, I know, I know that you can. I, I you know, once once um, you know, once once. Things started to click for me, uh, you know, because I started doing the film, the the, the film thing, you know, and um, I didn't want to believe it, but and I'm sure a lot of actors don't want to believe it when they first start out as an actor. They they think, well, you know, I can do this. This is no problem, right? And oh, don't tell me I need lessons. You know, I don't need any <laughs> acting lessons. You know, I don't need that. Um, and so it took a while for me to realize that, you know, I do need acting lessons. <laughs> so uh, let's skip forward then. So how long were you in Vegas before you, you decided to step into acting? So um, I've been in Vegas almost 20 plus years. And about five years ago when uh, <clears throat> Jason Bourne was filmed out here. Okay. Uh, I got uh, an email to... Uh, uh, they, they were looking for um, drivers for the movie. Okay. So I went and checked it out and got a chance to get into the movie and uh, was, was a background extra uh, and really enjoyed it. Had a, had a, a few um, different scenes where I was a background uh, hotel patron. Um, 
there was one scene that I was actually going to be in the actual scene, but they cut it. And I was really bummed about it because uh, they made it. Julie made an extra effort to have me do something different where I was going to be able to be uh, featured. And that part just it, they ended up cutting the scene. So I was like really bummed. The one thing about Hollywood productions is, is we people don't realize how many hours goes into footage that never gets seen. I was an extra in a movie in Atlanta, and we filmed for two days, and that entire shoot was never shown in the movie. Unreal. And that was for Invasion USA. Well, I'm not surprised. You know, um, I see it happening all the time uh, where they'll bring you on board as a background, and, and then they won't even use you. Yeah. You know, you'll be sitting there for like eight hours, and then you're not even used. Yeah. So I, I don't understand it. You know, but as long as you're getting paid, right? <laughs> That's all that matters. Right, right. And they can afford the big budgets. So. That's what's mind-boggling is how yeah. can they afford all that money going down to waste? So you, you did that, and then that's when the acting bug kicked in again? So I did that, and then I did a few I, – I, after I did that, I started dabbling in some short films and stuff and getting my foot in the door. And, uh, you know, I started understanding kind of what, what how it all went and how it worked and stuff. And uh, and I started realizing that that to put – an effort into what you do, no matter what it is, mm -hmm. you need to have some kind of training. Unless, unless you're like a natural born actor, um, and there are a few of those. Sure, yeah. Uh, there is no way in, in heck that you're going to be able to be successful unless you know exactly what you're doing. And, and and what I mean exactly what you're doing, I'm not saying. I mean, I, you learn every day as an right. actor. Exactly. You learn new things every day. But what the basics of of being getting your foot planted and knowing exactly what you need to do to, to, to be successful in, in, in beginning and creating and ending a scene. So you took acting classes. So during the pandemic, yeah, I, uh, I looked into starting to take classes and I, I took advantage of some of the free stuff that was out there. And so I connected with one of the acting coaches here in town that was giving back to the community really and I thought, well, this is this is perfect. This is great. I can commit, you know, commit some time to this, and see where it goes. So, who was that? Oh, uh, well, it was Dream Tracks. Okay. Uh, Frank Perillo. Okay. Um, his his folks. So I went. I I got on board with them. We started doing zooms every week, uh, and that's really how I really started to understand what it took to break down a scene and how to mentally prepare for an audition and to understand what it is that you're auditioning for what how to break down what it is that you're looking at and what they want you to do uh and so taking these acting classes allowed me to do that and i feel a hundred percent more confident in myself where... i think a lot of people don't realize that that building the confidence is key for what you just said and that there's nothing wrong we don't prepare a lot of people don't prepare for an audition they think that when you're an actor you just go out there and act and you just go read your lines but you 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 just said something that's key it's like you need to know how to audition oh yeah it's not just about auditioning it's how do you audition correct yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of things that you end up learning through acting and through your acting coach the the etiquette of auditioning and the ins and outs of auditioning and 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 really just making that auditioning not become like an audition but a, a meeting of its own uh where you can really be mentally prepared without being scared and owning your in the moment presence inside that room those things that i know now had i known them before it would have been a, a, an absolute big difference yeah. yes so i struggled mightily during the beginning just like i'm sure every actor does at the beginning you, you have no idea what the hell you're doing and it's not until you really understand what how to prepare for them that you know that that you'll at least have a chance yeah to to get something out of it and since I've done this with Frank, I my confidence level is so much higher. I've, you know, things are looking up. I'm 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 really beginning to 
really feel like an actor. Um, there, for the longest time, I didn't feel like an actor. I didn't. I just. I, I was like, don't call me that. I'm not an actor. You know, I'm. I'm. <laughs> I'm just not. You know. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Because yeah. I almost felt guilty. Because I. Yeah. I was like, wait a minute. Don't call me an actor. I'm not really prepared yet to be called an actor, even though I am acting. I'm not an actor yet. <laughs> you know, I. I can understand that when I started writing. Um, the first, I attended some seminars at Emory University in Atlanta. And the first seminar I was there, they asked us to introduce ourselves and what we do. And I had a script in my hand. And when she got around to me, she asked me, um, who wrote that? And I said, I did. And she goes, oh, so you're a writer. And I said, well, no, I consider myself a creator. And she said, you just told me you wrote that. I go, well, yeah, but, you know, I don't think it's verbally correct or anything. She goes, but you wrote it. I said, yes. She goes, from this point forward, you're a writer. So I think it is that confidence level as well. It took it's, me a if long, you can call yourself an actor, then you're an actor. It took me a long time to uh, accept. I don't know what it was, James, but I, I, I think it was there, there's a magical moment. And I don't know if it's like this for everybody, but it was for me. There was a magical moment that came one day where everything just pretty much came together. And I was like, wow, this this feels cool. Yeah, I can totally. And it's relate. happened to me like, oh, excuse me. It's happened to me a couple of times. It happened to me the first time when I was before the Frank era, before when I first met uh, a director that I met that 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 took me under his wing and said, "Look, I'll meet with you on a weekly basis. You pay me ten bucks a week. We'll get together and I'll I'll teach you the ins and outs." That's a great of, deal. Ten I'll teach bucks you. A week. I'll teach you the ins and outs of of acting. And so we did that. Um, me and Conrad got together every every week, and he and he started showing me, you know, don't move your head, keep it straight. Uh, you know, he, the one of the first things that he got me to do was to read uh, Streetcar Named Desire, okay. which you know I don't I don't normally read, and so that was a big deal. You know, I took the time to read the entire uh, book novel we'll call it with the screen play and uh that's how i started learning how to act was to read that uh book and then start breaking it down um just by choosing any place on in there and then we would break that scene down that's how we started so we did that um with different screen plays different writers you know that's great and yeah i thought it was just absolutely amazing and so that that it gave me a flavor of like a little bit of everything mm -hmm. and so without that that would have been it would have been very difficult to be where i'm at right now so what was the first film you were in that you actually felt like i'm an actor drone down drone down yeah yeah and that's recent yeah that's recent yeah when is it coming out do you know um January. January. Yep. Um, Mike Conway is the director. Uh, I play a park ranger that's not very well liked. And uh, the role is just perfect for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm really excited about it. Now, is it a lead? No, it's not even a lead. It's a supporting role. Okay. But still, that's pretty darn good. Oh, heck yes. Yeah. 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 I'm real excited. Yeah. And then you're in another little film that I know of. Yes. The Factory. Yes. <laughs> And I think they're going to be building your part up a little bit. We're hoping for it anyway. Correct. Now, that's a film that actually has tentacles out there in that this will be the first of the film. And then hopefully there'll be either a prequel or a sequel or both. And then hopefully that will merge into a television series. That'll be amazing. So, yeah. So I've heard about your role possibly enhancing that for you yeah. going forward. So That'll be great. Um, I was also in Rogue Angel. Okay. Uh, I had a small uh uh, featured role in that and then I'm going to be in Move Me No Mountain as okay. well Deborah Richards movie I've got a, a small role in that movie as a, a police that's officer that's great yeah but I'm extremely excited to be in, in this movie because uh, first of all she's an amazing director and it, it just, her stuff just looks amazing I just I can't even I can't even wait mm -hmm. to see what what, 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 how, what she's going to come up with the final when product. will that one be filmed I think they start filming in a few weeks okay yeah yeah that's really so, great. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. So who else have you worked with here in Vegas that I might know? Well, uh, 
Uh, Brenda Daly. Brenda uh, Daly. Mom Squad. Yeah, yeah. Um, know about Mom Squad. And there's a few other projects that are coming down the road um, that uh, haven't come to fruition yet. Um, but there's a lot of little, little directors here and there that I've been uh, trying to get some work with. And their projects, for whatever reason, they kind of like all of a sudden get on a... How do they find out about you? You pretty much just start... I, I You know what I do is I really don't promote myself as much as a lot of other actors do. Um, I just pretty much, whatever it is I, I can, that I feel proud of, I'll put it in my demo reel and then I'll send it off and then I'll make sure that I have, uh, you know, some good headshots to go with it. You never want to send something that's cruddy looking, right? You want to send something that's going to be professional looking and something that fits down the role of what they're looking for. So I'm starting to do more of those headshots where it's just not really just one headshot. It's more than, yeah, you do a series. I like do three a or series four, yeah. exactly, and I'll send the, the the right headshot to them so that they can see, you know, what it is that I'm interested in. You know, mm -hmm. um, so how do you hear about these projects? You know, you got your Facebook. Your your you, you got people on on board um, through the Facebook apps. I mean, the pages, the different pages that you're on that you go on, and then also word of mouth, and also your friends, and also the showcases that you attend, and also the connections that you get through your acting coach so you put yourself out there then you actually go out there to the events or i do i do i don't go to every single event but i try to go out there you know and you know one of the cool things is um the stunt academy as well mm -hmm. i'm a part of that um okay. alan woodman's yep. group i think they're just a great bunch i think alan himself is just an amazing guy yeah, they've been in here and he gives back to the community and and i love to be a part of that because he's just he's just got so much wealth of information and he's spot on on everything that he says as far as what he teaches as far as you know uh being a stunt a professional stunt and knowing all the different like the falls and the safety and just all the different things that you get to learn in his class are just absolutely amazing and he's worked on several movies oh yeah he's yeah. pretty much yeah. the dude as far as you know if you want some kind of stunt work done in your movie you, you best get a hold of him but um, I mean, even Hollywood movies, he's done quite a bit. Yeah, he has. Yeah. He's been. Oh, you ought to hear some of the stories he has. Just yeah. some some amazing stories. But um, what else? What was I saying? Um, well, we were talking about. Um, well, now I almost forgot to hear. But <laughs> we were we were talking about how you get your leads. How who do you? Go yes. To? And so right. And so I was. Uh, so through the like through the stunt academy as well, you get your leads through that because he he's out there and he. He goes up to bat for his students. So you get, you know, you get certified, you do some of the things that he does, and then and then you audition for some of the roles that they're looking for through his academy. And so uh, the same is the same thing is going on with uh, the voice acting studio, the voice actor studio. They just opened up their TVAS 3.0. And so I'm gonna take advantage of that. Yeah, uh, which it, helps out the you know, beginning actors that want to get into voiceover that were um, the to, that want to get more exposed out there to you know and get uh, hands-on training. It's it's now going to be more available than more than ever before. Now we're talking about Las Vegas, but I think this is probably true for every city. You know that's really interesting. What what, what was what were you going to ask? Well, I was going to say I think that you know you've talked about Chicago, and even in in the little town you were talking about in Texas, there's always a local theater. There's always something you can get involved in. And I think you just have to find it and just go out there and look for it. Yeah. And you and Facebook is a great place to do that. Too, yes. You know. Yes. Look for your local communities. Yeah. On yeah. Facebook. No, I was, I was, I was. Yeah. It, every city has their own thing going. You know. Mm -hmm. um, that's what's amazing. And Vegas has their own flavor of actors. And I'm just hoping, you know, one day that, you know, I'm going to continue to do what I do. I'm I'm a writer first. I love my job. I've been doing it for twenty plus years. When that day comes, whenever that day comes, when I decided to retire from that, I I want to continue on as an and be an actor. And so I'm doing all the things that are necessary now to set yourself to set up. myself up for when that day comes. You know, yeah. um, I I don't ever want anybody to think that you know that acting is is. And I don't think I've taken you know done that. You know, I, acting is a second thing for me. It, it was a hobby that that I just I decided to take up, and I've really enjoyed it. And I I 
think that I'm going to stick with it. You know what I'm saying? And you should. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, and it's funny when you, when you start acting and you start understanding what it takes to be a, a good actor and be, and you start becoming coordinated as an actor and doing the improv and, and all of a sudden magical things start happening to you. I don't know what it is. It becomes fun. Well, it becomes and, fun. Yeah, but, and it's but a passion that you now can have fun with. Other things start yeah. to open up, you know? Um, you know, I want to be a part of helping out uh, production. I So I've gotten some boom operator experience, you know? And so, you know, it's, it's fun to, to dabble in a little bit of, you know, but not to overdo yourself, you know? Yeah. Um, so, well, so what, what the next project, you just said you finished the drone down, mm-hmm. drone down, and you have a couple more. You mentioned the one. Move Me No Mountain. Move, okay. And then I've been asked to do some here and there's um, within the community, but um, I'm actually, you know, really thinking about uh, having an agent that can start helping me to get solidified a little bit more and that's what becomes a difficult thing um, well i was it, it it can be difficult if you make it difficult and my dilemma right now is the word scared okay. fear mm-hmm. uh being being eaten alive um and but i need to m- assure myself and be more assertive of myself because i've I've come a long ways. Number one, number two, I've got, I've got some solid ground now that I didn't have before, and so, and and I didn't come up with that. Right. My acting coach came up with that. Okay. And so I'm going by what he said, and so I'm, I feel like I'm, you're getting there. Like I'm, yeah, I'm getting there. Like I'm ready, but I'm still scared. (laughs) So where can we learn more about Raf Adami? Where can you learn more? Mm-hmm. What do you mean? Do you have a Facebook page or? Um, no, I don't. I really don't like to advertise my Facebook page. Okay. Um, all right. How do you want people to get a hold of you then if they need you for an acting gig? I, I don't. I don't really. Um, I mean, this this is cool. You know, okay. I was I was actually. So just have them come to Quirky Minds Media and ask for Raf. Hey, there you go. Okay. That'll work. That'll, <laughs> I, fine with me. I, I, I'll call you up. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah, that that's perfect. Um, I'm not really out to advertise myself and to let people know. Hey, if you need to look me up, uh, I'm you know I'm just I'm going with the flow. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, and whatever it is that you do, you got to be good at what it is that you do, mm-hmm. and that's the one thing that I've that I'm trying to do is to not make the mistakes that I made in the past, and to be able to deliver you know what it is that they're asking for it from a from an actor now you had mentioned to me before we went on the air today that you had a little bit of a trailer you'd like for me to add on to the end of this clip yeah so if you'll supply that to me i'll make sure and do that absolutely yeah, it's yeah. the drone down trailer which yeah. is coming out um january and uh there'll be about four or five other films that are beginning that are going to be coming out with that one as well and they'll be premiering at the galaxy theaters um i believe it's it'll be there'll be some kind of an announcement coming up okay. i'm sure ben stober is the one that yep. spearheaded ben, this whole no, thing ben. ben's been in here yeah. and uh so i think you, that's the one that's seven films and seven yes days. originally i believe it was seven films and i think it's been cut down reduced to a number like four or five I'm not oh really sure. yeah. yeah 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 i pretty much know everyone associated with that one so, yeah, yeah, there was a few things, uh, a few directors that decided to pull out. Okay. Well, but, what I liked, you mentioned Galaxy Theaters, and I really want to give them a plug because they're so generous to the to the independent producers here in Las Vegas. Wow, that's really you know, good. They really are, you know, um, with premiering all their independent, independent films. That is so, awesome. Yeah, it's really nice. That's great to hear. Well, Raf, thank you for so much for being on the show today. And I want to keep up with your career, and I want you to come back in a year or two, or if not sooner, and let us what, know what else is going on with you. James Kelly, thank you very much. I appreciate it, and thank you for allowing me to be part of your show. And, yes, I definitely would love to do that. You're more than sure. welcome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. 
See, there's a, wait, what is that? Let me take it. Stop it. Stop pushing buttons. You're going to get us in trouble. I tell you what's going to happen. You two doofuses are going to go out there and find that drone on your own. Me and Russell got to go to the woods tomorrow to do some ranger stuff. You should come with. Tell him what attacked you. A Sasquatch. More specifically, a, a herd of Sasquatch. I see. <laughs> Bigfoot or not, our mission is to find these men and bring them home. Okay, ladies, follow my lead. Whoa, whoa, stand down, light. What are you doing in a restricted area? Well, my name's Leah. I'm a wildlife photographer. There's your culprit. It's obvious what happened here. Did you really see it? Yes. Excuse me, did you say something? Yeah, I did actually. I've had it with your nonchalant attitude about this. Two of your colleagues are missing, or worse. And you don't give a single shit about it. <laughs> 